Hello everyone, my name is James Coleman, I'm a product design graduate and Maxwell Render Mentor and Tutor in South East England, and in today's hot tip I'm just going to be briefly talking about the Maxwell Render Photoshop plugin. The other week I was at New Designers 2013, and I met a transport design graduate from the University of Huddersfield called Mac Byers, and he was exhibiting his final year project of an airship. And of course we got talking about the rendering, and if I remember rightly he mentioned that he used Mental Ray. And we got talking about the advantages of Maxwell Render. And I think he mentioned that he found compositing quite difficult in Mental Ray. So I mentioned the Photoshop plugin available for Maxwell Render. And I realised that probably not a lot of people who are looking to buy Maxwell Render know about the features of this. But it is certainly a constant in my workflow. So I'd just like to have a quick look at it and its potential. This is an image rendered in Maxwell and then saved in the native MXI format. And as you can see in the Layers panel, there's a variety of different layers available for compositing purposes. And this is where the main power of this plugin comes from. So for example, if I move down the layers, this is the rendered image. And as you can see, Photoshop automatically renames it according to the SL which it reached. So at a glance, you can immediately remember the SL of this image. Next is the background mask and the background. Now usually I won't use these a great deal, and I'll explain why in a second. Then we've got Fresnel and Roughness. Now these are literally layers to indicate the Fresnel and the roughness of the image. For example, in the Roughness layer, the headlights are glass, so they're not very rough at all. But this material down here that I used for the lower air intake was a very, very rough material, just to give the illusion of darkness. So that appears white. And the same applies in the Fresnel layer. Dark means there is very little Fresnel, and white, for example, on the ridges of the bump in the headlights, means there's a lot of Fresnel. And these layers can be used in compositing to control the amount of Fresnel or roughness that you can see in your scene. Next are the object and material ID layers. And as you can see in these layers, every single individual material appears the same color. And in an application like Photoshop, you can then select this color and instantly know that you have that particular material selected. The same applies for the object ID layer, but in this case, the colors are broken up into individual objects. And I should mention, of course, that both the object ID color and the material ID color are entirely customizable. You can select them in Maxwell Render and have a look at my previous tutorial to have a look at how to do that. Moving down the layers, we've got extra Z, and this is a Z depth pass. So objects near the camera are white, objects further away from the camera are black. And again, the Z depth is entirely customizable, and this layer would be used to create an artificial depth of field in Photoshop. And finally, in this case, we have an alpha layer. Now this shows the background is black and the object is white. So this could be copy and pasted to use as an alpha layer. Now I should point out that all these layers are not the only options available to you. You can also have diffuse and reflection separately. You can have a shadow layer if you enable the shadow option in materials. You can have a motion vector layer if any objects are moving and also normals and position. And all of these channels are here to make compositing easier so that when your render is finished and you're back in Photoshop, you can composite nice and easily. And it's something that I got talking with Mac about and it struck me that not many people who don't use Max for Render probably realize this. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at jcom underscore design. Any questions or suggestions, send them to maxwellrenderbrightoncpt at gmail.com. Thanks very much. I'll see you again soon.